be discussing how to apply concepts to find missing angles, including angles that are formed by parallel lines cut by a transversal. Acute angles measure between 0 and 90 degrees, so they are very small. These are some examples of acute angles. We have angle A, which is 68 degrees, angle B, which is 86 degrees, and angle C, which is 24 degrees. As you can tell, all of these angles are between 0 and 90 degrees, making them acute angles. Obtuse angles are angles that measure between 90 and 180 degrees. For example, 116 degrees, 112 degrees, 105 degrees, 94 degrees, and 168 degrees. They are formed by two perpendicular lines and are equal to 90 degrees. Straight angles are formed by a straight line that equal 180 degrees. Two angles are very different from 90 degree angles or right angles. In this case, complementary angles are two angles that add up to 90 degrees. For example, here we have a 90 degree angle but it is cut into two different angles, a 40 degree angle and a 50 degree angle. When you add 40 plus 50 together, that gives you 90. Therefore, 40 and 50 are both complementary angles. Here you also have complementary angles, but they are not next to each other, and they don't have to be. These angles are 27 degrees and 63 degrees. When you add them together, you get 90 degrees. Therefore, these are also complementary angles. These angles add up to 180 degrees. Again, it is two angles together that adds 180. So in this case, we have 40 degrees and 140 degrees. Together, when you add them, it equals to 180 degrees. Once again, the angles do not have to be next to each other. So as you can see, 60 degrees and 120 degrees can also be considered supplementary since they add up to 180 degrees. Next, we're going to be discussing adjacent angles. Adjacent angles share a common side as well as a vertex. Here you have angle ABD and it is being cut by segment BC. Angle ABC is equal to 26 degrees and angle CBD is equal to 33 degrees. These are adjacent because they share the common line which is CB and they also share a common vertex which is point B. Here we have corresponding angles. If the lines are intersecting, then the corresponding angles are in the same relative position but are not congruent. Whereas if the lines are indeed parallel, the corresponding angles are also in the same relative position but they are in fact congruent. That is a very big thing that you need to distinguish. So again, if the lines are intersecting, then the corresponding angles will not be congruent. But if the lines are parallel, then they will be congruent. Here we have an example. In this case, the lines are intersecting, therefore not parallel. So A and E are corresponding angles, but here they will not be congruent. B and F are also corresponding angles, C and G, as well as D and H. Move on to vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent angles opposite of each other formed by intersecting lines and they share a vertex. Here is an example of two intersecting lines. In this case, A and B are vertical angles and they are also congruent. Here's another example using numbers. Here we can see that we have two intersecting lines and they form four different angles. 82 degrees is considered two vertical angles because they are congruent opposite of each other and they share a vertex as well as 98 degrees. 98 degrees now has two arches around it because it is not congruent to 82 degrees. Move on to alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles are pairs of angles on the opposite side of the transversal but inside the two parallel lines and they also add up to 180 degrees. In this case, if you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, you do want to look for the letter Z. In this example, there are two pairs of alternate interior angles. 
you have angle C and F as well as angle D and E. Alternate exterior angles are pairs of angles on the opposite sides of the transversal, but they are outside of the two parallel lines. They also add up to 180 degrees. Here is the exact same example as the previous one for alternate interior, but in this case we're going to be talking about alternate exterior. Here the alternate exterior angles are A and H, as well as B and G. Consecutive interior angles. Consecutive interior are pairs of angles on the same side of the transversal, but inside of the two parallel lines. Think about it. The word consecutive means the same or one after another, whereas interior means inside. So you want to think same side on the inside. And they also add up to 180 degrees. Here is our two parallel lines cut by a transversal. And in this case, our consecutive interior angles are C and E and D and F. Please notice how they are on the same side of the transversal and in between the parallel lines, which is consecutive exterior. So same thing, consecutive means it will be on the same side of the transversal, but since here we're talking about exterior, they are on the outside of the two parallel lines. And of course, they add up to 180 degrees. Looking at this example, the consecutive exterior angles are A and G and B and H. And once again, same side of the transversal, but on the outside of the two parallel lines. Apply these concepts for good use. Example one, solve for X and find the degree of the angle. Here we notice that we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. We have one degree that is X plus 39 and the other is 132 degrees. You would like to figure out whether or not you would add them together and set them equal to 180 degrees or set them equal to each other. First, you want to ask yourself what kind of angle is 132 degrees. In this case, it can be a corresponding angle to slide up next to X plus 39. Now you know that 132 degrees and x plus 39 are supplementary angles because they are along the straight line. Supplementary means that you add them to 180 degrees. Now let's solve for x. First we're going to combine like terms. So 39 plus 132 will give you 171. Then you will subtract the 171 from both sides to get x is equal to 9. Next, you're going to substitute the value of x back into the original equation, or in this case, original expression, to find your missing angle. In this case, our missing angle is x plus 39, so we're going to substitute the 9 in to get 48 degrees. So in this case, our missing angle is 48 degrees. Let's try another example. Here again, we are going to solve for x and find the degree of the angle, but in this case, we have angles that are on the same side of the transversal and in between parallel lines. So we know that these are consecutive interior angles. We also know that consecutive interior angles add up to 180 degrees or are considered supplementary. So our next step will be to set them equal to 180 and then solve for X. So the first thing we're going to do is write X plus 109 plus X plus 89 is equal to 180 because again, we are adding both of our angles and setting them equal to 180. Next, we're going to combine like terms to get 2x plus 198 is equal to 180. Next, you want to subtract 198 from both sides to get 2x is equal to negative 18 and then divide by 2 to get x is equal to negative 9. Next, you're going to substitute back into the original to find the missing angle. In this case, we have two missing angles, so we must substitute the negative 9 into both x plus 109 as well as x plus 89. When we substitute it into the first missing angle, negative 9 plus 109 will give us 100 degrees, and into the second missing angle, we get negative 9 plus 89 will give us 80 degrees. Next, you want to check your work. Here we have 100 degrees plus 80 degrees is equal to 180 degrees which in fact you know must be true because they are consecutive interior angles. 
Let's move on to our final example, which is a word problem. Taylor and Eric were presented with the following set of angles, and their goal was to solve for x. Taylor set them equal to each other, but Eric added them and set them equal to 180 degrees. A. Analyze each method and determine who is correct. So the first thing you want to ask yourself is what kind of angles are they? If you do not realize that these are alternate exterior angles, you can also see that they are vertical angles. Now you want to ask yourself, well, how do you know that they are vertical angles? 12x plus 17 can also be a corresponding angle to slide up to be vertical to negative 1 plus 14x. Now you want to ask yourself, are they congruent? Well, vertical angles, as well as alternate exterior angles, you know, are congruent. So, yes. Then you want to say, well, should I set them equal to each other or add them to 180? Since they are congruent, you can simply set them equal to each other. So now, who is correct? Taylor is correct because vertical angles are congruent, so they must be set equal to each other to find the value of x. This would be a correct response on the regents in case you do get this question. You would also gain full credit because you include a variable, who is correct, as well as proper math language. At part B, compute the value of x. So step one, we know we said to set them equal to each other. So we have negative one plus 14x is equal to 12x plus 17. First, we are going to add one to both sides. Then we can also subtract negative 12x from both sides. It does not matter what you begin with as long as you either add or subtract so that all the constants are on one side of the equal sign and all of the variables are on the other. So in this case, we will get 2x is equal to 18. Next, you will divide both sides by two to get x is equal to nine, and that is our value of x. The last part of the problem which is determine the measure of each angle. Since we know that x was equal to nine, we're going to substitute the value of x into each missing angle. Here we have the first angle, which is negative one plus 14x. So we're going to do 14 times nine to get 126, and then subtract one to give us 125 degrees. If we substitute the value of x, which in this case is nine, into our second missing angle, it should also be 125 degrees because we know that they are congruent angles. And when we do out the math, we can see that they are in fact equal to each other. So as our check, the degrees should be equal and in fact they are equal, or in this case congruent.